So I'm Rachel Williams and I'm Ambassador for Welsh Women's Aid. I'm also Ambassador for Threshold Domestic Abuse Services, formerly Lynethley Women's Aid. I'm also Ambassador for the Freedom Programme, which is a programme which is run out in, in a lot of the refuges and domestic abuse services for women who have come out of an abusive relationship to sort of get an insight to what they've actually been in. And I'm also a pioneer for Safe Lives. So when I met Darren, he was charming and funny and everything, you, you know, you sort of want, look for, for a partner. My first initial encounter of abuse slash violence was when I was seven months pregnant with Darren's child and he lifted me off the floor by my throat and he let me go and my lips turned blue and that was his words he later told me. Just thought it was something that happened, you know, I forgave him for it, he was remorsefully sorry wouldn't happen again and then over the years drip feed process before I knew it I was in a violent relationship. It was July the 9th 2011 we'd had a row and Darren strangled me which is not the first time he'd done it and then he slit his wrist in front of our 16 year old son. That was when my fears really changed then because I thought if he's capable of doing that in front of our boy what else was he capable of doing? then I thought, i got to get out of this. I did. I, I filed for divorce, put the house up for sale, it went to the police, gave a lengthy historical statement, which was pages and pages long. They arrested him, charged him with common assault, which is something I'm campaigning for as well. But if somebody's strangling you, that's not common assault. That should be a standalone charge in itself, attempted murder in my eyes. During a six-week process, when I finally left him, I was stalked and harassed, not recognising it as stalking and harassment. My police force didn't recognise it as stalking and harassment. And then you come into my place of work armed with a sawn off shotgun. There was a battle in the shop. After he hit me with the gun and I fell on the floor, I pulled my knees up under my chin into sort of like a fetal position. And he aimed the gun at my chest and he told me he loved me and pulled the trigger. The first shot hit my leg and then I felt another blast and the second shot thankfully missed me. It was a busy salon, somebody had already left and gone to phone the police. Um, the next thing I know I, I was being punched, kicked, stamped on. The next thing then he'd gone, he disappeared. My local hospital stabilised me and took me to Morrison who managed to save my leg. While I was in hospital, Jack became withdrawn and lost and he was failed miserably by the system. I went to hospital on the 23rd of September and sadly Jack committed suicide on the 26th. I think that Jack's death has given me more fire in my belly to make the changes that's so needed and I know in the six weeks that I was being stalked and harassed there was so many failings on every level and I said I do not want to see another family go through what we went through. And then I first spoke publicly in Landaf Cathedral in 2014 and the Minister Leighton Andrews, domestic abuse and violence was under his portfolio. I can remember sitting in the cathedral and all these people piling in and thinking, oh my goodness, Rachel, what have you said, what have you, said you do? So I just stood up and just gave my speech. Uh, you know, it's, it's a shocking tragedy to share. And I can remember after it, Leighton Andrews really crying, not just a little bit. I mean, after he had to compose himself because he was speaking after me. And I can remember one of the ladies who worked for Welsh Women's Aid said, oh my goodness, you've made Leighton Andrews cry. And I was like, who's Leighton Andrews? And he was like, the minister. I'm like, oh no, is that a good thing or bad? And she said, no, it's a good thing because it means he's getting it. And I'm like, yeah, great. You know, at least he's getting it. And he needed to see that these stats and figures are the families like myself. It's not just doom and gloom stuff I want to share. And I say, you know, and women say the same to me as well. We're sick of seeing the posters with a woman with a black eye. Let's see some more empowering posters around. Let's show what women can overcome. Women who have been in domestic abusive relationships are the strongest women I know because they're in those relationships day in, day out. They're safeguarding themselves and the children. And I say we're the strongest people I know. So I think everybody is in a position to learn from not just my case, but all the other cases that are out there as well. They need to listen to those who are brave and strong enough to be able to share their stories.